Hi everyone, can I just say what a fucking great idea this podcast was. I am literally sitting in the dark, shrouded in my blanket, and I'm wearing literally one of three outfits I've been wearing for the past month and a half. I know, really disgusting. I like literally wear the same three things. And I'm so sorry for the few people who have seen me in the past month because you probably are wondering why I keep showing up in the same outfit. But honestly, I could not be bothered right now. And these are the three most comfortable things that I want to be wearing. Moving on. I went through something today and it just made me so upset that I officially had my first cry of 2023. Someone give me a gold star for that because I finally got it out of the way. I feel way better and it's such a good thing to be able to let out your emotions healthily. After I had that cry, I decided to film a podcast episode which is not the one that you're listening to right now. And I was stupid. I didn't really record it correctly. So you couldn't even hear anything I was saying. So I'm redoing it again. And it's actually probably a better idea that I do it again. Because at that time, I was freshly emotional. I was very vulnerable. And I was ready to just let out all of my negativity. I was basically having a rant session during... Uh, that podcast. As enjoyable as that is, I love a good rant session. It's not the most positive. Hopefully this episode is a little bit more positive than the one I filmed earlier. I'm going to tackle this situation that I'm in right now by pointing out some positive things. So a little bit of backstory. Yes, I'm going to explain what happened to me. I am working on this project. It's a group project. I don't know why I was so naive in thinking that once I graduate college, I'm never going to do a group project again. Little did I know, all of adult life is a group project. You are just going to be working with so many people all the time on so many things. And I just, who likes group projects? Like if you say that you're a team player, that's because you're a team player when the players that you're playing with are, you know, on your side and good, smart, decent human beings. When you have people around you that are annoying, not intelligent, and don't do their part, you're stupid if you're a team player. In this case, I was put on a team And it's a pretty small team. And unfortunately, and everybody knows this, I am the only one that knows how to use the key like tool that we're using for this project. I, you know, in the beginning, I was really okay with having other people on the team, even though they didn't have a good idea of the tool that we're using. Because I was like, I this is not a one person project. So if I can get other people to help me on this, it would make my life way easier and less stressful. But now that I look back, I wish I had done this entire project by myself. It I could have done it by myself. And I now looking back, I prefer it that way because I ended up relying on somebody who did not do their job. And they didn't have bad intentions, I don't think. I don't think, but they did not do their job right. And so I spent my Friday night, instead of watching movies with my family, I literally was hunched over typing away on my laptop at 10 p.m., redoing all the parts that this person was assigned to because they did not do even a half-assed job. It was not what we were looking for. And I just had to redo it. So then now I have a Friday night that gets ruined. I'm upset and I have to redo it. When I could have just, if from the beginning, done it myself. And I wouldn't be that emotionally traumatized. You know, like it's not even that big of a deal to do that part of the project. It would have been fine if I had expected that I was going to do it. But now that I have to do this really last minute... And I didn't expect it. And it's another thing I have to think about. 
I am not happy about it. So that is the backstory of where I'm coming from. Like I said, I'm not going to make this extremely negative. And I want to turn it on its head and talk about like specific traits that are so rare and special that when you find people with these traits, you better cling on to them. They are worthy of your time and energy and they are unicorns. That's how I'm making this a positive thing. And the first thing, something that I realized that is way more important than I thought is reliability. If you can find somebody that you can rely on, that you can trust, and that can have your back, never let them go. I realized that pretty much 10% of the people in this world probably are reliable. They are there for you and they don't just think about themselves and put themselves first all the time. It's reasonable to put yourself first sometimes, but there are some people, most people who will put themselves first and will rarely do much work for somebody else. I realize this is way more important to me than I had realized in the beginning. When I thought back on the number of times that I have had a mental breakdown about this, about meeting and having to deal with people who weren't reliable, and it's been plenty, plenty in the past few months. So I realized like this is something that is so rare to come by and it causes a lot of problems when you let people who aren't reliable into your life. Another trait that makes some people rare Pokemons is the ability to be a good listener, especially today. And all of these traits that some people are missing, you know, and it's not because of them, like they choosing not to have these things. It's way more than that. It's like, it's a trait that's like just hard to get. It's a trait that you yourself had to build over your lifetime that somebody else had to teach you that you had to consciously sometimes, you know, keep in mind and like work on. So being a good listener is really hard. I struggle with this. It is so hard to be a good listener when I have literally a brain of a goldfish and I get distracted all the time and I feel like my brain is racing with so many thoughts and ideas and tasks and all of that stuff. So When you're able to meet somebody who can like sit down with you and like fully give a hundred percent of their attention to you and listen to every single detail of your story and not make you feel bad for kind of talking for hours and hours and giving more detail than you should, that is so hard to find. If you know that you have this, all the people in your life are lucky to have you because when you have somebody like this in your life, you truly feel heard. That can do a lot. It could do almost as good as therapy sometimes <laughs> for me. And it's pretty easy to tell when someone's a good listener because one, they won't interrupt you and they're not listening to you just to respond to you. When they ask their questions, they ask such unique questions that like there's no way that they are not listening. Like these are questions coming from somebody who is really deeply listening to your story and they picked up on things that most people wouldn't pick up. Also, okay, like I said, literally brain of a goldfish. I realized that a really good way of figuring out whether or not someone is reliable is when you first meet them or just whenever you want to test this out you should ask somebody to help you with something even better if you can like set like a longer time period between when you ask them and when you like want them to have it done by and see if they remember and see how well they actually get that thing done even if you feel like you never will ask them for help you can get a lot of information on whether or not they want to help you, how much effort they're willing to put in to help you and be there for you. And you can just find out whether or not they're generally a reliable person. But anyways, yeah, back to that point. Good listeners, gold, great. So another amazing thing if you can find a friend a person in your life where you know they aren't leeching on your drama that they aren't enjoying and kind of like relishing in all the problems negative things that you tell them 
and they just want what's best for you. That is so rare. I, okay, like, you know, hearing these things, maybe it's a little bit more negative of a podcast than I thought, because it's like, you would think that these things are easier to come by, but they're so hard to come by. This was like part of my breakdown today. It wasn't even like I, I stared at my ceiling crying, not because I was being a little bitch about having to do this work. Yes, it sucked. Yes, that could have nearly led to me crying, but it wasn't enough to make me cry. What was making me really upset is that I was just so disappointed with the human race. So many people I've been meeting in general for the past few months are just not reliable and there for me at all. I mean, I'm so thankful that my three friends are there for me. I'm grateful for that. But like, unfortunately, those three friends can't be there for me and can't be with me on projects and different things like that in every single part of my life. So I'm going to have to deal with shitty, annoying people. I just thought it would be, you know, a little bit easier to find those people. But unfortunately, that is not the case. So this rare trait, right? It's just hard to find somebody who doesn't use your issues as entertainment and instead like genuinely wants to make sure that you're okay and would rather you be stable and happy than having really fun gossip. Like, yes, gossip. Gossip is so stinking fun. I don't like being in the middle of drama, but once in a while, I love hearing it like Everyone loves a good story, you know, a good spicy little story in their life. But there's a, there's a line. And when people cross that fucking line, it, it concerns me. Because I'm like, don't you want me to be happy? But you're putting gas into this fire and making it worse just so that you can be further entertained. I just can't wrap my head around that. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> so... You got to find that person who really does want what's best for you. When you have moments of your success, they're there to celebrate it with you. Even though they might not be in the spotlight, they are fully there for you. At least they seem like they're fully there for you. Sometimes some people are really good at hiding it, but hopefully you can figure out the difference. Anyways, if you ever find one person at all in this world that has all three of those traits you are so 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 lucky and if you don't find people in your life that have all three of those traits that's okay it's just so hard to find and most humans aren't like that and if you are thinking about yourself and you're like damn i really don't have those three traits it's also okay because like i said it's pretty hard and it's not because you're a bad person there's a lot of factors that keep you from having those three special traits. There's a lot of work to maintain. Like, I don't have all three of those traits for sure. If you know that you don't have them, it doesn't hurt to, like, try. Because then you know that you are a special, unique friend to other people. And you are a token friend. That's just nice to know that you are that kind of person. Because then when you are that type of person, you can only attract people like that you can only ask for people like that you are giving off the energy and meeting those standards but anyways let me know what you think somehow again okay bye